Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan for Honeybee Stamps and in today's video I'm going to create a background using one of my favorite techniques and that is using tonic shimmer powders. The stamp sets I'll be using today is the Harvest Blooms stamp set and the Blessed stamp set and also the coordinating die. There are three layers to that die and I will be using two of them. First, I'm going to start by stamping my background. You can see this is a really large stamp filled with beautiful floral images. I'm lining it up in my Misty tool and I'm using a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor paper that's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm prepping that with my anti-static powder tool and then I'm going to ink up my image with an embossing ink. I'll close the door of my Misty and giving that a lot of really good pressure, I'm going to stamp that down. Now, if I didn't pick up the paper when I opened the door of my Misty, I'm going to go ahead and stamp it again. At least if the paper didn't move, I know that everything will stay in the same place. So I do like to stamp twice if I can. Then I'm going to sprinkle the background with some white embossing powder. Now after I have my heat tool warming up off on the side so it's nice and hot, I will bring it to my panel and melt that embossing powder. You could also use clear embossing powder here too. After my embossing powder is all nice and melted, I'm going to tape it to a board that I have here. This is just a cutting board that I picked up at my local store and I'm holding that down with some blue painters tape. I want to make sure this stays nice and flat because I will be adding some water to it. So I don't want this to curl up on me. Then I'm spritzing this background with some clear water in a little spray bottle that I have. And I'm taking the Lilac Waterfall. This is the Tonic Shimmer Powder. And I'm going to sprinkle this all over that background. So you want to tap the bottle. Don't squeeze. You can tap from behind or on the side. When you tap from behind, it does kind of shoot it out a little bit. So you do want to kind of be cautious when you're tapping that powder. Then I'll bring in my water again and spritzing it. And I'm kind of coming in from the side. If I'm spraying it from the side, that'll help move that powder a little bit. And I want this to be a little more intense, so I'm bringing in some more of the powder. I could go with a darker shimmer powder, but I didn't want that to take over. What's really nice is that this powder is going to catch in those embossed lines. So some of the areas are going to be really dark and vibrant. Others will be softer. Now I wanted to spread this color out just a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in my paintbrush and just kind of help move that around, but I'm not taking away the intensity of some of those areas. Then I'm going to set this off on the side to air dry. I do find the results are better when you let them air dry versus drying with a heat tool. While that's drying, I'm going to work on some of the other, other elements of my card. I'm die cutting this first word blessed from some gold glitter cardstock. I also die cut it two more times out of white 110 pound cardstock. And I'm going to layer these together with the Honeybee Stamps liquid glue. And I like to use my tweezers to kind of help that placement so I can kind of squeeze the letters together, make sure they're lined up. And then I can attach that gold glitter die cut on top. This just adds a little bit of dimension to the card. Now I also die cut a shadow piece out of some vellum. And once I have my die cut word here, I'll go ahead and add a little bit of glue to the back of that and place that on top of the vellum. After that's attached, I do like to put this under something heavy like a book or my Misty tool just to make sure that it's adhered together really well and gives that a few minutes of drying time. I'll then work on my smaller sentiment, which is going to come off of that same blessed stamp set. And I am using my mini Misty tool and some black cardstock. I'll prep that with an anti-static powder tool, ink up my sentiment with some embossing ink and stamp that down onto my cardstock. If I feel I didn't get a good impression the first time, I will stamp it again. Then I can sprinkle on my white embossing powder, tapping off any of the excess. And then I can melt that embossing powder with my heat tool. And a lot of times I will take a Swiffer cloth and rub over that just to remove any of that excess powder and kind of really bring that black back out. Then I'll just use my paper trimmer to trim out my sentiment so it's a nice skinny strip. 
Now, my panel wasn't quite dry and it had been sitting for a couple hours because I was running back and forth from picking my daughter up from volleyball practice. So I had a little bit of drying time in there a couple hours, but it wasn't completely dry. So I'm carefully removing my painter's tape because the cardstock is wet, so it will tear more easily. And here's just a close up look of that intense color in some of those areas, but where it's lighter in others. And it's just filled with shimmer, which is so beautiful. Now I did dab up a little bit of the excess water that was on there. And the rest of this, I am going to heat with my heat tool to kind of speed up that process. But otherwise, like I said before, this is a lot better if you can let it just completely air dry. I'll then take this over to my paper trimmer. I'm gonna trim off those edges. And this panel will end up measuring three and three quarters by five inches. I'm also going to cut a few more pieces of cardstock to that same size to layer behind my panel. This is going to offer a lot of support since my cardstock was pretty wet. So this uh, extra cardstock behind it will not only give dimension, but full support behind my panel. You could also use foam tape here, but I just really prefer the cardstock, especially when I have a panel that uh, was just so saturated before and it's still a little bit wet. I shouldn't say wet, it's a little damp, so this really helps. Then I can add the adhesive to the back of that panel and add it to a card base that is measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is gonna leave some really nice white margins around my panel. I can then finish off the card by adding my sentiments. So I'm adding a little bit of that liquid glue to the back of my die cut word and adding that to the front of the card. I love the fine tip of the honeybee stamps glue. It is really great for small letters like this. And then with a little bit of tape runner and foam squares, I added my skinny strip sentiment right underneath my die cut word. So that finish off, finishes off the card for today. Like I said, this is one of my favorite ways to create a background and it is actually a pretty quick to do so you could do a few of them at one time. I will have all the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.